Thanks for that, Matt. Um, so today I'll be talking about the Gerard Black Box Warring Trial, which is a partnership between the Aboriginal Lands Trust, Gerard Aboriginal Community Council, Gerard Aboriginal Learning on Country Team, and the Natural Resources SA Murray Darling Basin Wetland and Floodplain Team. So the River Murray floodplain in South Australia is dominated by two tree species, these being the River Red Gum and the Black Box, and these species are well adapted to an environment that was ca um, characterised frequently by frequent drought and flood events. Um, these species are both particularly dependent upon flooding um, in the region because rainfall is generally insufficient to maintain health over the long term. Um, and as such, the dieback of um, floodplain trees is considered an issue of considerable concern. Um, so it's quite unsurprising that there has been a lot of attention on these um, species and um, their decline, particularly in relation to drought, river regulation and salinisation over the last few years. So the Gerard Black Box Watering um, Trial came about through the Australian Government's Biodiversity Fund project and the Natural Resources SA MDB Wetland and Floodplain Program played a key role in delivering a project that looked at enhancing and, uh, vegetation and promoting regeneration along the River Murray floodplain. So under this broader project, the Gerard Black Box uh, watering trial objectives centred around enhancing and restoring floodplain vegetation, um, improving habitat, trialling different watering techniques and also building knowledge and capacity. So the study site we refer to as the Gerard floodplain um, is located approximately 15 kilometres southwest of the township of Berry in the Riverland region. The floodplain is located at the downstream end of Cataraco National Park um, and it's located on lands held by the Aboriginal Lands Trust um, which are managed by the Gerard Aboriginal Community Council. Um, you can see to the east there there's um, some nice Mallee Highland and to the west is the River Murray and to the south you've got the Cataraco National Park boundary. So across the floodplain itself, there are a number of temporary wetlands, depressions and flood runners. And um, you'll find very typical uh, River Murray floodplain vegetation across the site. So along the edges of the river are really healthy river red gums. Um, while when you move further back, there's a mixture of healthy and stressed river red gums around the flood runners and wetland basins. There's also lignum and kuba um, that's found in an around floodplain depressions and other lower lying areas that receive rainfall runoff. Um, the soils across the site are a mixture of grey clay um, in those depression areas and then um, at the base of that Mallee, Mallee area you've got sands and there's also sand hills present across the entire site. There's also evidence of salinisation um, along the flood runners and there's um, quite a range of understory vegetation, um, but it's mainly comprised of species such as Eremophila, ruby saltbush, um, pig face and myopora. And there's also quite a lot of organic material, so your la uh, leaf and bark litter um, and fallen branches. So, um, there are a number of reasons why the site was selected as part of this trial. So firstly, there were black box, which was one of our um, target species. Um, also, the site is really close to Berry, so we had to access the site multiple times in a month, and that made it a lot easier. Um, there was a lot of interest shown for the project by the Aboriginal Lands Trust and the Gerard Community Council, and they were very keen to undertake um, works to rehabilitate the floodplain and look after the vegetation in particular. And um, as part of the biofund, we also um, identified it as a high priority site um, through a site prioritisation project. And it's also a um, very high priority site um, from a cultural um, aspect. 
So the Watering Project presented us with this really great opportunity to work with a number of groups. Um, so the Gerard Aboriginal Community Council and ALT, um, the Gerard Aboriginal Learning on Country team or ALOC team, uh, SADI and also within the region with the Natural Resources, SAMDB, Community Engagement and Aboriginal Partnerships team. So since about spring 2013, we've been working in close partnership um, with the Gerard ALOC guys to get this project out on the ground. Um, so very early on in the project, we um, worked together to identify some of the different activities that the ALOC team could be involved in. So um, one of the things we really wanted out of this project was to promote that um, sense of ownership over this trial and um, also to help the ALOC team uh, develop skills and fill their hours that would contribute to their training. So some of the activities they were involved in was the actual setup um, of the watering trail, so um, IDing the area that we could use, um, IDing of trees, tagging and GPSing those trees, the preparation and setup of the infrastructure on site, um, since then they've been involved in the ongoing maintenance of the infrastructure, so if the hose pops off they um, deal with that. They've been undertaking the actual watering themselves as well, um, have assisted with the monitoring. Um, they've also identified additional areas for conservation or management, so they've been looking at areas where we've seen significant regeneration of black box um, and other areas where there's opportunities for uh, future watering and they've also undertaken pest plant and animal mapping and control across the site. So a little bit about our trail species which was the black fox or is the black fox. Um, typically it grows to around 10 to 20 meters. It can be single or multi-stemmed. Uh, the leaves can vary um, in color. They're typically green but can be kind of bluish and also vary in size. Um, black box are distributed across New South Wales, uh, Queensland, Victoria and South Australia and they're found on floodplains adjacent to major rivers fringing intermittently flooded depressions or in paleo channels and they have a dimorphic root system so they can access water from multiple sources or interchangeably. So for this trial we selected 90 trees and they were all GPSed and tagged with a cattle tag which we allocated a number um, 1 to 90. Um, trees were then allocated into plots which comprised of 5 trees each so we ended up with a total of 18 plots. Um, within each plot the trial trees were separated by at least 8 metres while the trees of individual plots were separated by at least 20 metres, generally more, and that was in order to minimise the risk of one treatment applied in one plot, potentially affecting trees in an adjacent plot. So we had 30 trees in each treatment, so um, there were two treatments trial. Treatment one uh, consisted of 3,000 litres of water delivered on a monthly basis and treatment two um, was 3,000 litres uh, delivered every other month and we also had 30 trees that acted as our controls. So we delivered water to each of the treatment plots using gravity fed um, irrigation infrastructure. So the infrastructure was comprised of recycled 1,000 litre agricultural shuttles which we sourced locally. Um, they were thoroughly cleaned and then treated with UV resistant spray to prevent them from breaking down while out on the floor plane. Um, they were fitted with small hoses and taps which were fed by a single main feeder hose and some of the shuttles were elevated using logs um, while there was sufficient elevation at um, other plots. So to actually get the water um, into those shuttles, um, the ALOC crews pump water into shuttles that were on the back of a trailer and then pump the water from those shuttles into the shuttles on site. So it was very time consuming or still is very time consuming, especially if you're refilling shuttles three times. 
and we kept track of the watering um, using log sheets attached to each of the shuttles and also a copy in a folder just to make sure that um, everyone was getting what they needed. So we've been undertaking seasonal monitoring since the trial started with a pre-watering round of monitoring also undertaken in October 2013. Um, trees are monitored using the Living Murray Tree Health Condition Assessment Methodology. So that includes uh, visual assessments of tree health condition looking at crown extent and density, density and other condition parameters including epicormic growth, nutrient growth, leaf dieback, mistletoe and reproduction. Um, and we also took photos of each of the monitor trees on each monitoring occasion. So we've just done some very simple data analysis um, at this stage. So the dark green line um, at the bottom there is the control group. Uh, the next line up is the treatment two, so watered every other month. Um, and then the kind of mid-green colour up from that is the treatment one group receiving water every month. So um, you can see that initially the trees were um, in quite similar condition. Um, this data analysis only goes as far as winter 2015, at which point the control trees were in marginally worse condition when, from when we first started. Um, trees in the treatment too, so watered every other month, were in pretty much similar average condition to when we first started. And the treatment one trees, so watered every month, uh, were in marginally better average condition. So we've still got a bit to do so, um, and we've still got some questions to answer. Um, so what were the effects of the watering on the trees? It's a bit difficult to say without a bit more detailed data analysis that we're hoping to undertake in the next few months. Um, and we also have to have a really good look at what influence rainfall had on the results. Um, because we did experience occasional but quite substantial rainfalls throughout the trial period, although not so much in the last year. Um, we're also looking at some improvements in the design of the trial. So something we noticed was that the placement of the taps was probably quite important. So um, we noticed that in trees where the taps were quite close to or right up to the base of the trunk of the tree, we weren't really seeing any kind of results. Whereas if the tap was maybe two or three metres out from the trunk, um, we were seeing things like new tip growth and epicormic growth. So um, we're looking to upgrade to a um, maybe like a soaker hose design that's laid around the um, trunk <coughs> about two or three metres out in the drip line, canopy drip line, um, which will probably have some good outcomes for the understory vegetation as well. Um, also, the refilling and emptying of the shuttles is really time consuming um, and I guess the one issue with this uh, project is that uh, the water trees are really far away from a permanent water source, so pumping is prohibitively expensive, um, hence we came up with this design. So um, maybe considerations about around future waterings that might be similar to this is looking at bigger tanks. Um, but I think the key thing is that uh, we've learned a lot from this trial so far, which we can build on and improve um, in the future. So I mentioned before that we work with a lot of people um, and just want to acknowledge them because we just couldn't do this without them. Um, in particular, Kingsley and Roger, as well as the Gerard Alock team, Kingsley, Lily, Gary Senior, Gary Junior, Tim Ross, Josh and Luke, um, also the guys from Calprom, Peter and Troy, um, the Natural Resources, SAMDB, Aboriginal Partnerships team, and thanks also to Suze Garrig from Saudi and Beck Turner from the Wetlands team. So thank you.